one of the biggest headaches with 8mm camcorders were that uh, sometimes they went out of alignment while you were making your recording. And this was a problem because then when you tried to play those tapes back, they wouldn't play. Sometimes we can recover the content by purposely misaligning a playback machine to track a malaligned tape. Let's see how it's done. Today I figured I'd show you guys uh, my recovery service. So I've received some tapes that uh, don't play. If I try to play them, they are severely distorted. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, tweak the machine and see if we can get this machine to play the tapes correctly. So because the image is, is bad on the bottom uh, side of the tape, I'm going to tweak the exit side guide here. And I can't really do this while I'm holding the camera because I need both hands. But we're going to tweak the exit side guide and see if we can get that tape to play correctly. And uh, once I've got it playing correctly, then I'm going to be uh, digitizing it onto my uh, PC and then uh, putting the file as, a, as an MP4 and sending it back to the client. So let's see if I can get this to play back. So I'm now going to tweak the exit guide while watching on the monitor. As you can see now, I've just a slight adjustment and I've got the tape to play correctly. The Sony GV HD700 sends the analog video signal out as a DV signal over FireWire for capture on computer. So the machine I'm using is a, an EVS7000, which is a, a real nice machine. It's uh, one of the better ones that Sony made. It's got a time-based corrector built in. And of course, I have to monitor this while I'm doing this recovery. I have to basically babysit this thing because uh, a lot of times when camcorders went out of alignment, the uh, alignment shifted. So between every shot, it could disrupt the picture. So I have to be I have to be monitoring this thing so that I can make adjustments on the fly as uh, the uh, tape may change while it's uh, playing back. I should point out that not every tape can be recovered. Only tapes that were out of spec due to the guides wandering away from their set position can be recovered. On some camcorders, one of the guides would actually fall out and that records a tape that is so far out of spec that there's no chance of recovery. Also, problems that happened where um, dirt and debris, sand could get into the mechanism and stop the guides from completely loading properly. And in those cases, there's not much chance that you can recover it. We'll take another look at my uh, uh, EVS 7000, which has been modified to make recovery a little bit easier as far as setting it up. Uh, there's a switch on the back right there. And what that does, it's just a modification that I did. And I don't know if you can see where the wire goes, but it, it goes down here into one of the ICs. And what that does is that actually defeats the audio mute because on 8mm and high 8 tapes, they use AFM audio and the mute, the sound gets muted if the signal is even slightly distorted. And um, so sometimes I'll have a tape that's really bad and there might be a little bit of crackling and stuff in the sound, but at least I can get most of the sound. You, know, you get a bit of a buzz in there, but a little bit of a buzz with the audio is better than no audio at all. And that's what the switch does. When the switch is off, it mutes as normal. And when the switch is on, it basically grounds out the mute pin and uh, allows me to get a recording. That also aids in when I'm setting up the alignment because I can hear the sound and the sound will start to get clearer as well as they approach a, a, a happy medium on the alignment here. Now, what I need to do is between every tape, uh, I will have to go back and I'll realign the machine back to, uh, well, generally, if, if all their tapes have drifted the same amount, I shouldn't have to play around with this thing much. But once I'm done, then I'll go back and I'll put in a tape that was recorded in one of my cameras years ago and bring this thing back to, uh, to normal, um, starting point the alignment back to normal so that the next time i have a recovery i you know i'm, I'm going to start out at the uh at, at the correct alignment because you can get pretty messed up when you're starting to start tweaking guides back and forth back and forth you can get real messed up and i can say get i can recover most tapes the exception being if one of the guides fell out on the camera like some of those cameras the guide posts fell out if a guide post fell out then there's really not a hell of a lot you can do you can get back some of the picture but there'll be lines in it and there'll be noise in the sound but uh, if it was just an alignment issue which this appears to, to that the uh, guide started to to drift on the camera that made the recording 
So when I get a tape that the just the alignment was out, I can usually get a pretty good recovery using this machine. That's one of the reasons I hang on to this machine, and I've got another one uh, similar to this that I just for parts like if the head drum were to wear out, for example, because those parts are interchangeable. Because these machines, you're not finding parts for these anymore, right? They are just they are very rare, hard to come by, and uh, they command quite a high price to get them today. But anyway, there's that nice display on this thing. So say this was a very expensive machine. Uh, I bought it new, and I I think I paid three thousand dollars for this thing. It was a ridiculous machine, but I used to use this to play back the tapes off of my EVW 300, which was a professional camera that I had a number of years ago.